So guys, we're on our way to Kentucky right now to visit Papa John. And yes, it's the Papa John, as in the billionaire Papa John. He's showing us his house, we're getting a day in the life, taking you along, and I got a Starbucks. So let's go. Yeah, I bought this property in 95, right after we went public. This is the home of Hobbs, and this is the town of Anchorage. And before it was Anchorage, Kentucky, it was Hobbs Station. And so he had um, his well out there. Right in here is where he had his, uh, his crops. His well came down the stream. How did you start Papa John's? I was at Gaddy's, worked at Domino's, worked at Rockies. So then I came up with this Papa John concept, recipes, equipment, logos, lighters, hats, shirts, everything. I put it in a box and hit it. And my mom said, you know, if you start something, you gotta finish it. So you, you know, you gotta finish college. That's when I decided to take the box out of the closet and do Papa John pizza in the broom closet. Most of the house is underground. So I didn't want a big, ostentatious, pompous building. Yeah. I wanted something that fit in the charm of Anchorage, but had the space, so I went down. The gym, the underground tunnel system, mechanicals, the theater, so that the house doesn't go way up in the air. It's only a, really, a story to half ranch. Wow. I heard a very interesting story that you were dumpster diving for receipts yeah. outside of Domino's. Could you tell us about that? We, we just couldn't get the word out. And um, even when we put a sign on the door, we still, people didn't know about Papa John's and we didn't have enough money for marketing. Uh, every night Domino's would throw all their customer list, their deli sheets in the dumpster. And we would climb, climb in the dumpster at one or two and then the next day I'd send a, a letter to the customer because I already now knew they ordered. I knew they ordered at home. I knew they knew what home delivery was all about. So, hey, we're a new kid on the block. Uh, we make a better pizza. Here's a half price. And that worked That worked really well. Why do you have honey here? Because I have my own garden. We have my own farm right across the hooks. Really? The organic farm is pretty badass. This is the problem with corporate America. Is it's, all, it's always a my, almighty dollar. But they adulterate this honey. They got a thousand ways to cheat. That's why honey in the stores half price, because it's synthetic. And they're putting all the American bee bar, uh, farmers out of business. These little small farmers. So we grow our own. It's an organic farm, organic flowers. So the bees, everything goes in there, pure as it can get. I've noticed you have quite a few eagles throughout property. There's always one guy or one girl that figures it out. Um, this is a Chesterfield. He's the best eagle guy. And this spins four times an hour. So when eagles mate, they go up a couple thousand feet. They mate all the way down. That's what they're mating. Right before they hit the ground, they separate so they don't kill themselves. I perfect timing, a clock. So this is a giant clock, four times an hour. But how do you tell the time with this? Can well, you, you just, because it, it points that way on the fourth time. It's with, actually, it's, it's within like three seconds of an hour, but it, it's not perfect. I feel like there's so many antiques and history wow. here that we're just walking past. Yes, like, you are. Like, like that's this... came out, that came out of uh, Italy. That's from uh, an estate in Italy. But you're, you got a good eye. What you do is you take one piece that's old and you put it in here and you fold. This is all fold Yeah, work. of course. And then it looks like the house is 100 years old. For those that don't know, by the way, the faux finishing like this takes a long time, especially to do a room of this size all the way to the ceiling. My guess is this is probably, what, a week or two of more? <laughs> How did you scale from one store to 10 to 100 to 1,000 to 5,000? I think resilient and persistency beats genius and in intellect every time. Uh, let's say you want to be a dentist. Sooner or later there's going to be a dentist that was a dentist before you were a dentist that has made it. Well, human nature, then they start playing their golf. Then they start having their poker game on Tuesday night. Then they start closing off us on Friday. And what it does, it gives a young entrepreneur like you that's a striving dentist that wants to be like the other dentist, it gives you that incentive. Sooner or later, if you outwork them, you're gonna take advantage of the guy on the golf course. And they all get fat and happy. And so I call it soft. The concept of sitting on the couch, eating Doritos, watching TV, or drinking beer or Cokes, uh, what a waste of life. I mean, is that really living? Because you can sit there and eat potato chips and watch a game? I mean, you know, I, I, think, I think God is movement. You know, life is movement, and I think it's important to keep moving. Wow. This is my office. Um, we were talking earlier about um, perspective. This is a bishop's chair that I got out of uh, Italy, a church in Italy. 
we think it's about 600 years old, 700 years old, because if you look over here, the perspective is terrible. It almost looks like mush. But if you take one 600 year old piece and then you build around it, the whole room feels like it's, it's you know, very old. But that's my grandfather. We talked about him, Papa. This might seem ignorant, but how do you come across a piece like this? How do you get this? I just go buy it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I just buy it. And I buy them, and then I start, I'll build something, and it just comes into play. So it's, it's back to tinkering. How has having money changed your life? I think you, you got to ask yourself, why do you want to be rich? Do you want that car? Do you want that, your, that child to go, your child to go to that college? Do you want that house? Uh, do you want to give that money to um, you know, charity? I think you, you got to do what Tony Robbins does, who's a friend of mine. He, and he, he would say, you'd have to ask why. You know, my answer was, A, is I never want to lose that airplane because, you know, flying commercial is not cool. Private is, is the way to go. And two is money gives me freedom. You know, I, I can do pretty well anything I want to do every, every, every day I want to do it or do nothing. I think the wealth gives you not only the ability, but the opportunities to do things that are meaningful, you know, and, and if you're, if you're making a contribution to society and you're making a contribution to yourself, you're going to be a pretty happy human being. So right now we're one story below ground level and what you could see here, it looks like a little city. This is incredible with the windows, the door, but this is the garage. This is what's so remarkable about it. It kind of reminds me of uh, the forum shops at the Venetian with the painted ceilings and the garage just keeps going down. I mean, what I would do for a garage like this, I would probably hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe, that's what I would do. Where do you invest your money? I've liked gold the last couple of years. I liked oil four or five years ago. Um, I remember Jim Cramer saying, I think it was Exxon, sell at 32. And we've ridden that up to over $100 a share. I like pipelines, um, but I, I like the dividend stocks. Um, they usually co coincide with the market. Mm -hmm. I don't want to worry about money, so I don't look at the market. So, you know, the dividend income is, you know, four or five times more than I spend a year to live. If the market goes up 10% that year, that's a windfall. If the market stays exactly where it's at, I don't care because I get the 6% dividend. And if we have a crash, then I still get the 6% dividend. I've got all the same power to hold on to those when the market crashes and then I get that kiss on that black swan. So the best thing that can happen to me right now is a 20% correction. That would be the best thing for me, or a 20% up. You know, I have hundreds of millions of dollars. Say I had 900 million in, in, in the market, and it goes down to 600 million. I'd feel stupid. I mean, I'd feel like a complete idiot. I mean, I just lost $300 million. I don't want to take that chance. And everybody says it's a 100-year crash. Yeah, it's a 100-year crash every 10 years. And we're way overdue for a crash. And we are going to have a crash, just a question of when. This is a mosaic means less than two inches. This has got 320,000 mosaics. There was 20 guys in here for two months laying this floor. The Italians, wow. Ferrari, Lamborghini, they're great at building things. You want German engineering. Um, but this came uh, out of Italy. This diamond, room, believe it or not, holds 32 or 34. It's a big room. You could, if you look at it, you can actually play basketball in here. <laughs> and these lights came out of a bank in England. So I just bought those. I didn't know what I was gonna do with them, <laughs> hung them up there. This is Raphael. This is a painting, a mosaic of Raphael. Uh, this is 100 AD. Before Christ and the Ten Commandments, you had the four virtues. And these are just, that's Moses being circumcised, etc. Now, when you sold off a big chunk of your shares in Papa John, what was that like to see the money hit your account? When you got all your money in Papa John stock, 80% uh, of it, and then all of a sudden now all that money's cash, you don't know how much money a billion dollars is. And, and what I've tried to do with my kids, the best mechanism that I've found to educate them on how much is a million dollars is dividend stocks. It's 5%. How much is a million dollars? It's 50 grand a year. How much is 10 million? It's 500 grand a year. That's what it is. And that's the only thing that's really stuck because I have my kids coming, well, I want to invest in a software company or a computer company. I only need $5 million. You only need $5 million. I mean, they don't have any comp how much money $5 million is. Uh, I got this out of a castle in France. 
This has got holes in it where worms eat holes. No um, way. When this happened, That's... everybody wanted to get rid of their, their fireplace. But over time, this kind of became like a delicatessen where people wow. want the holes. So this is almost like an indoor, outdoor kind of feel. All of these open up to the backyard. Yeah, when you're, when you're having yeah. people over, you open these, you put on the golf, and then they can kind of come and go. You know, we cook pizzas over oh, the pizza oven. Wow. Now this is interesting. We talk about the mind's eye. Yeah. The guest house is two stories and it's three foot taller on topography. Remember the property slopes 64 feet. Yeah. This is a story to half. So how do you camouflage the fact that the guest house is higher than the main house? You build a lagoon. Oh, hook them together. So the lagoon, the mind's eye disappears that this is three foot lower than that. So what I try to do with the house is use the house. Yeah. And so if you look at it, you know, it's, it's fairly big, but I use it. I mean, you know, like that dining room. People love to come over and eat in that dining room. This pool, uh, the golf course, I mean, the gym. We, I use the heck out of this place. Um, every great entrepreneur did it something that was not the way everybody else was doing it. And we're not gonna solve the problems of today where we're teaching our youth, give you guys exhibit A, how, you know, or what to think. You know, you need to learn how to think. The greatest thing that our youth has, and our youth is our future, is their imagination, their creativity. I call it tinkering. Like, we'll go up look at the backyard where I'm putting in a stadium kind of deal for pickleball. They say, what are you doing? I'm tinkering. Because every time I move a corner or I pick out a different counter or I put something on a different angle, it changes the whole perspective. So I think it's the, that creativity that we're stifling um, by telling people that, you know, you can't disagree um, with other people. And if you do disagree with them, they're going to attack you because your ideology. I think that's the most unhealthiest thing going on right now, and I think it's a problem. I had this gazebo. I got the pickleball court. I got a putting green right here. You guys can watch this in rural area. We talk about tinkering. This was the tee. Kept hitting the lights and tearing up I'm pickleball. Okay, scrap that. So now this is gonna be a putting green that comes into here and that'll be the practice tee up there. And I put a couch down here with a couple chairs with this a couple 10 foot tents. Yeah. I thought everybody would stay up by the pool and the gazebo. Everybody, without exception, comes down here. So you gotta build a bar. Okay, next problem. They have to go to the bathroom. They gotta go all the house, all the way over to the guest house. So, come on, we'll show you. All these stones came out of a street in Chicago, these granite comb stones. And so we just took the cobblestones. That arch came out of Italy. I don't even know where I bought that arch. I had the door in storage. I just bought the eagles. And now all of a sudden we got a bathroom. And that being, it works perfect. You know, I don't like sitting around watching TV. You know, if you turn on one news channel, they look at the situation, say, see it one way or another, you know, so it's biased and that, that's okay. You, but it's done in a way that's uh, divisive and disruptive and that uh, concerns me gravely for the future of our country. That we're a house, as Lincoln said, a house divided uh, cannot stand. And you know, our biggest enemy in the whole world is ourselves, this infighting and it's just gotta stop. And I think it starts with, so on the quantum work we talked about with bliss and kindness and love and um, mutual respect, thoughtfulness, consideration, um, just being nice. We start out the interview with yeah. creativity. Yeah. There's no difference in figuring out how to walk around that bar, how many sit at that bar, how high is that TV off the bar, than build a big company. It's the same part of the brain. We've moved the appliances around in this thing seven times. We've moved this twice. I moved that twice. I moved that three times. This, we built this. We've rebuilt it now three times. There's lamps which is temporary. These are lamps I brought out of that uh, Interesting. castle. So I'll build it. The personality is what you think, how you feel, and how you act. I mean, you can think positive, but if you don't feel positive, you know, act positive, it's all for nothing. You can talk integrity, but if you're not being truthful and you're not acting truthful, it's, it's you know, so you, you, you want to keep how you feel and how you think and how you act all to be coherent. Find something you love. You guys love what you do. Find something you're good at and work it to the bone and you'll be successful. If you like it and you're good at it, sooner or later, you're going to break through. Just find something. I love making pizzas and I knew how to run a business, so it, it kind of worked out.